Hey everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the average cybersecurity salaries that you can see across the United States and uh, in different states. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and share some of these salaries. Now, before we go into this, uh, what I want to mention here is that uh, when it comes down to the salary, it's going to, there's a lot of things being factored in, right? One of the most important ones, experience. So cybersecurity is an entry level. You have to have some experience as a network system administrator, maybe even like end user support. But you want to go into cybersecurity with some experience and also, if you can, some certifications. Um, certifications like the CISP and CH will increase your chance of, of getting that job. Of course, CISP requires experience. So, um, you know, the more you crack on, the better, but experience is king. Another thing, education. So if you can achieve like a bachelor's degree in computer information technology or master's degree, then again, that's going to increase your chances. Um, and then looking at the roles and responsibilities, right? A lot of people, they'll have the whole package, but the resume just doesn't look good, right? Think of it like this. Going into a restaurant, someone gives you a menu, you take a look at the menu, and it's unstructured, doesn't look that great. The presentation's off, right? You may uh, go somewhere else, right? So when you're making a resume, make it look good, you know, visually and organized. So that somebody who's looking for uh, somebody with that right experience, right? You got to tailor your resume to the job description. Got to make sure that your resume matches that job description one-on-one -on -one pretty well, right? Job descriptions asking for this experience, these skills, resumes, uh, clarifying how you're the best person for that position and you, uh, you uh, have those skills, right? So that's something to take into consideration. Let's go ahead and take a look at the salaries here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. All right, portion of screen, share. All right, so looking at salaries here, I mean, they're pretty high, right? Look at New York, average salary is 147000 a year, but New York has its own economy. It's really expensive down there. Um, the cost of an apartment is crazy expensive. Same thing with California, it's its own economy. Um, $142,000 a year may not even get you a house, really. Still be living in that apartment, but guess what? I mean, that's pretty good for the average. If you can excel, be more competitive, meet the market's requirements for the skills in your area, then you easily go into like the $200,000. You know, I once had a conversation with somebody in marketing. And let me tell you something, those marketing folks, they get paid good. Eh, they get paid real good. I don't know if you've researched some of the, the costs for some of these cybersecurity tools out there, but just one license for this one company costs like $100,000. I mean, that's crazy. But companies are willing to shell that money out because $100,000 versus... uh. GLB, you know, Glenn, Glenn Lynch, Bliley Act, uh, violation fine costs up to $100,000, right? PCI DSS fines costs can be very expensive. So they have to take a look at, at all that. But as we scroll down, you'll see that the uh, salaries start to go down significantly. Uh, we got places like uh, let's see here. Man, actually, I thought it would go down significantly. Still pretty high. 120, six figures and up for some of these areas like Nevada, Arizona, South Dakota, Ohio. I mean, I don't know too much about those areas, but I can only imagine the population isn't that high. That's, you know, somewhere like New York or California. So to be... Um, to have that average of 124 in Arizona, I mean, 
I think that's pretty good. You can actually get a house down in Arizona uh, off of 124000 So if you're trying to get into cybersecurity and maybe you want to move to a, a better cost of living area, then it's always open. As we scroll down, you can see some places like Georgia. Now you're getting into the low kind of six-figure marks, right? Texas, 111. But this is the average. Now it shows here that the lowest is, is Florida. And I'm pretty surprised about that. I mean, just cutting it almost six figures, right? But the national average is 132 according to ZipRecruiter. Now, I think that, you know, California at 142 makes sense because of inflation. But I feel like that an average Maybe for a senior cybersecurity associate, not so much for a junior. And I'd say that's pretty good for a mid. So anyhow, I just wanted to talk about these salaries. Now, if you go in a little deeper, see that like cybersecurity engineers, their annual pay is this much based off of some of these organizations, right? Uh, let's see here, we've got, $45 an hour, this one's at 144 but again, that's senior. That's a senior cybersecurity security engineer, right? That is not an entry-level person. So if you're looking to get into cybersecurity, you might want to just rack up some of these uh, factors, experience, certification, education, make sure that your skills align with the position that you're applying for. And then again, this is another site. So California, their, their average is 131, and Texas 101. So this is a little bit lower than the site that we're looking at earlier, ZipRecruiter. Um, I feel like this one's a little bit more realistic as far as ZipRecruiter, because ZipRecruiter, I feel like these are uh, maybe like the senior level pay brackets. When you're looking at more junior and mid, I feel like this is probably what you're looking at. You know, it makes sense that New York would be 133. Again, due to the cost of living, it's not going to cut it. But if you get that senior position, it might cut it. Arizona, 106. It's pretty good for a place like that. And you got Oklahoma at 81. Right? This makes sense. I agree with, with these pay brackets here. All right, so when we're looking at the cybersecurity engineer position. You're looking at anywhere between sixty to one hundred thousand dollars. Security consultant, eighty to one hundred and fifty. A lot that's going to be working as consultant, maybe for some of these larger companies. Security architect, one hundred thousand to one hundred and sixty. Because once you get into architect, you're actually structuring the network, and that's going to require some extra skills as well, not just being security, but also being in uh, network engineering as well. Incident response, 70 to 120. I feel like incident response would be um, a little bit lower in some circumstances because, you know, incident response somewhat entry level, right? Those are typically guys going to be working 365, 24-7. And so... Into response, I'd assume be a little bit lower. And then you got your CISO, one hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Wow, three hundred thousand dollars. It's probably like Microsoft or something. But one hundred fifty, that sounds about right. Because if you're a CISO, you probably got at least ten, fifteen, twenty years experience. But entry level, fifty to eighty thousand. That sounds about right. Mid. 80 to 120. Again, based off of where you live, that makes sense. Uh, senior, 120 to 300,000. Yeah, I agree with that. That sounds about right. And some of the cybersecurity salaries, cybersecurity analyst, that's your new guy. That's your uh, SOC analyst, or maybe they're just working with analytics. Then you got your cybersecurity specialist. They have maybe two, three years experience. Cybersecurity engineer, 
you know, at this point, you've got some experience in, in networking as well and how to properly design and build secure systems. And then you got a cybersecurity auditor, which I thought would make a little bit more money considering that they have to ensure that the company is compliant with these different regulations and standards and your cybersecurity manager and managers are always going to get paid well, but you're going to have to have that managerial experience, which usually comes with five plus years experience in cybersecurity. All right, let's scroll down a little bit here. So it's showing that the healthcare industry pays pretty well, 70 to 120 finance, 90 to 150, probably because they have more compliance requirements and government 80 to 120. Yeah, that sounds about right. But when you're working with the government, you have a more, I'd say, reliable schedule, right? You're going to be working 40 hours per week with holidays off, your finance, healthcare. I can't imagine you're going to have that type of schedule. Those places typically operate 24-7, 365, so you may not get those holidays off. You may be working uh, during the holidays. Right, but hey, you pay pretty well, not gonna lie. So future cybersecurity salaries, it's on the rise with the uh, introduction of Internet of Things and basically everything getting connected to the internet these days. The need for cybersecurity is only gonna grow. So do your research, highlight experience, consider non-salary based benefits, be confident and professional. That's the most important for me, be confident, be professional at all times. Know when to walk away. I've had to walk away from some offers before. And you know, sometimes it hits you pretty hard later on. You're just like, why did I work away from that? That was a good offer. And then another offer comes up and it's so much better. It's three, four times better than the offer that you're looking at. So don't get your head down if you walk away from an offer because maybe that schedule doesn't align with what you want, where the pay doesn't align with what you want. There's always more opportunities out there. Just keep growing your skills and your knowledge and uh, more offers will, will come your way. All right, let's look at some of the pitfalls of salary negotiation. Falling into research, market rate for your position and entry level. Yeah, that can be hard. Really got to uh, argue why you should have the salary you have in some circumstances. All right, focus solely on salary when negotiating. Yeah, look at all the perks. Look at, you know, the leave packages, look at their holidays, look at what stock options they give you, the cost of health care, how far the place is from where you live. Uh, those are all important things to factor in. But, you know, pay is also important. Hey, if I'm teleworking, I'm saving a lot of money on gas. And if I don't have to come into the office at all, well, that's win. Or maybe it's lost. Maybe you like going into the office once or twice a week and you like a hybrid schedule. You just got to find something that works for you and do your research. Being too aggressive and confrontational during negotiations. Yeah, never do that. Always be um, respectful, professional. And if, if you have a disagreement, be tactful. Ex explain the reason why you disagree tactfully and respectfully, okay? Failing to listen to the employer's needs and priorities. Hey, when you're reading that job description, it's important to understand what the employer wants, what they're looking for in a candidate, and make sure that your skills align with that. All right. Disclosing your desired salary too early and fully understanding the position and the organization. Yeah, so when you start a new job, don't tell anybody your salary. Don't tell that new guy because most likely they're going to ask. Okay. If you tell them your salary and you pay more than them, they're going to be jealous of you right off the get. So keep that to yourself. If they tell you yours, just don't tell them, don't tell them yours. You know, whether you get pay less or more than them, that's none of their business. Okay. You go in, you do your job. Now, if it slips, if if you do tell them, you know, 
there's really no going back at that time. Um, I mean, HR can get you in trouble. That's why I say don't do it because it's not, it's not worth getting in trouble, um, especially if you're at work. But if you're off work, I don't know. I mean, if you trust them, right, then two, how are you going to trust somebody you just met? So, yeah, make sure make sure you trust these people before you start telling them your salary. Failing to show up after negotiations. Yeah, don't do that. If you're not going to take the position, just let them know you're not taking the position. Because um, cause they got to look for somebody as well. But, you know, if you find another job, let that one go. Like I mentioned, there's plenty of jobs out there. So hope you like this uh, discussion about the salaries based off your location. I highly advise you uh, before you negotiate your salary. Um, and let, let's say you have all of these factors, right? Experience, certification, education, and skills. Then when it comes down to interview, if they're going to interview, there's a high chance they're going to hire you. So once they get to the interview, they're only looking at five or ten people, right? They shouldn't be interviewing 100 people at that point. They should have already scoped it down to a few applicants that they really like. And if you're in that pool, there's a good chance you're going to get hired. And there's a good chance they're going to bring up salary. So when they do, make sure you go and look up the average salary for your area. And I would recommend that you negotiate anywhere between the high and the low of that. When I may say high or low, I mean $10,000 lower or $10,000 higher than the average. But you want to make sure you're within that zone. Because if you're not, they may not take you seriously. I know that sounds crazy, but they might hire somebody else because you're lowballing your own skills. And when you lowball your own skills, it makes it look like maybe you're not competent enough for the position. So that's just one thing to take into consideration. Another thing you can ask them is you can ask them what's their low and their high. They may tell you. They may tell you. But a lot of times uh, they'll give you like a – a crazy low and high. They'll say we're between like 80 to like 150. And it's not very helpful, right? But if they do that, choose the average of that, right? Can't go wrong with the average. Don't go too low. Unless, unless you don't have any experience in cybersecurity and you're looking to, to get your foot in the door, I guess you can go low. But I'd be careful with that. You know, I'd still go at least low average, not exactly just low, because let's say you do land that position, now you're going to be unsatisfied with your salary. Guess what? You're probably going to be looking for another job within the next six months or a year after you've gained some experience. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's important to, to really at a point in your life, eventually through your career, find a company that you, that you want to be with and, and grow with um, and develop your skills for at least a few a few years, not just jump ship wide away for another salary because it's just a few things you never know. You just never know how the market's going to go. You never know if we're going to go through another recession or anything like that. And if you stay with the company for a little bit, you can at least take advantage of some of the perks that may they may provide you after like a year. Some some companies after a year, they'll give you some money for like education and stuff like that. And you can actually use that and then develop your skills a little bit more, right? Get your degree, get some more certifications and then jump ship. And when you jump ship, you at least have a little bit more experience and things to add to your portfolio. So to increase your overall value, right? Anyhow, I just wanted to spread the knowledge and go over these salaries. Hope you enjoyed the video. Danny, out.